I think Jojo's Bizarre Adventure is one of the top three fight producers in anime and manga, so I wanted to take a look at what makes their fight so good by using what I believe to be the top 10 fights in the story. I'll be focusing on the creative abilities and strategies used. You know I write with a scalpel because my penmanship is surgical. Number 10. The Marilyn Manson fight is one of the fights that live up to the bizarre in the title. MM has the ability to place a bet with someone and steal their money or organs if the user wins the bet. Throughout the fight, there are bets that are made. 100 throws, 200, and 1000. I'll start with Mirashon's tricks, the enemy stand user. She mostly watches the game go down, but towards the end, she starts providing devious distractions. When she flees and the heroes chase her, she leads them into a room and turns off the lights in an attempt to prevent them from catching the ball or throwing it in time. Another trick was bringing Jolene into an elevator to separate her from her throwing partner. Finally, she pays a guard to interrupt their throws, nearly ending the game in the anime and actually ending the game in the manga. Now, Ermes. Before she starts her round, she's shown chewing gum. During their game, a guard distracts her and she fumbles the ball, but it's revealed she copied her gum and put it on the ball ahead of time. When she took the sticker off the gum in her mouth, the copied gum flew back to her with the ball, allowing her to catch it before it hit the ground. That was genius. FF is next. When the lights were shut off, she used her inhuman physiology to catch the ball after it hit her. She also fired bullets randomly to hit Mirashon, forcing the latter to open the door to escape, giving the duo enough light to throw the ball. FF countered the elevator scheme by using her powers to open the elevator door and throwing the ball in the nick of time. Finally, Jolene's bag. In the manga, when FF threw the ball at the elevator, she unraveled the ball to catch it. In the anime, when the guard interrupted their game, she used her powers to unravel the ball and bring it back to her. Then she used the logic that her throwing partner was never decided on, meaning that the guard and Mirashon count as partners. This allowed her to finish the game by launching the ball at Mirashon's face several times to count as passes. I think this fight is great because it shows off the unique abilities of the main trio through clever tactics. All three of the heroes actually have solid powers that were able to be used in interesting ways. It also had a villain with a unique ability, and the concept of whether the victim thought they were cheating or not was explored well, especially in the anime. The fight is also unbelievably hype. It's even more impressive when you consider they're just playing catch. I remember losing my mind at all the small strategies they used the first time I read it. Number 9 is the Aqua Necklace fight. Angelo's Aqua Necklace can manipulate water. In the first round, Aqua Necklace enters the mouth of Tomoko. In order to save his mom, Josuke grabs a glass bottle, punches a hole through her, then breaks a glass bottle, and finally removes his hand while healing Tomoko and fixing the bottle around Aqua. In round 2, both fighters bring out a bag of tricks. I'll start with Angelo. He starts running hot water in Josuke's house to create steam, which he can then move through. This is a method to counter Josuke's bottle trick, showing that he's adapted. He predicts Josuke will move to a different room, and already has the humidifier on in there, allowing him to attack through the steam. Now Josuke's bag. He tries the bottle trick again, but it doesn't work. He breaks his wall to enter a different room, and fixes it to close off the steam. When Angelo tries to enter Josuke's mouth, pause, to try and kill him from the inside, he countered by trapping Aqua in a rubber glove, and removing him. It's revealed that he had previously cut up and swallowed a rubber glove, so all he had to do was fix it around Aqua to capture him. Finally, since stands and their users are connected, he swings around Aqua Necklace to reveal the user's location. Josuke finds him and beats him into a rock. This fight shows off Josuke's proficiency and creativity in battle and is a testament to how creative Crazy Diamond's powers are. The first round especially. I love the creativity from Angelo as well. He lost to a specific technique the first time, so in round 2, he makes sure that he has a countermeasure for that. My only issue is that the rubber glove came out of nowhere. They could have at least shown Josuke looking at a glove or even going through cabinets for an unknown reason. Something to foreshadow it. Number 8. I'll start with the villain, Akira. His stand, Red Hot Chili Peppers, has electric powers. He was pretty creative. He moved through electricity under the ground, allowing him to dodge and attack faster than Josuke. After getting caught lacking, Red Hot absorbs the electricity of the whole town for a power boost. This makes him faster and stronger than Josuke, and he gives him a beating. Josuke put up a great match against a powerful stand. When Red Hot was moving too fast, he turned the asphalt into tar coal and covered the electric spots his opponent was using. This slowed down his sneak attacks and allowed Josuke to land a combo. When Red Hot became too fast, Josuke launched a two-step plan. He fixed a broken tire around a stand when his guard was down. Rubber is an insulator for electricity, making it a natural weakness. Red Hot punches through this, but the air in the tire escapes, pushing the tire and Red Hot into the ocean. The electricity is dispersed through the ocean, ending the fight.
Number 7. Jumping Jack Flash is the stand of Lang, and it has the ability to remove gravity and fire items from his wrist centrifuges. This fight is up here because of the complexity of the zero gravity. It made the fight unique and brought it tons of creativity. Let's start with Lang. His macro strategy was to create a vacuum to boil his opponent's blood. This is because the air in the vicinity became weightless, which created a vacuum around the two victims. That's very clever. He kept them in an area by shooting at them from the outside and keeping them from the edges. I don't know how scientifically accurate the functions of his abilities are, but I'll assume they check out. He had other micro strategies in his bag. He turned off the zero G's to drop an object on Weather's head. He had a two-step plan that started with ricocheting shots off a can to hit Weather, but they were deflected. The second step of the plan was the hit can releasing oxygen and launching at Weather, knocking him away from escaping the zone. Another trick was throwing rats after shooting a wave of bullets to blind the blocking Jolene with blood. His last clever strategy was shredding Jolene's suit by throwing broken glass. Weather Report was showing out too. He deflected bullets by increasing the air resistance in his clouds. He burned Lang with his own friction when the enemy punched through his clouds. He boosted himself with wind while in zero gravity to chase down Lang. And his best play was creating the spacesuits to counter the effects of zero gravity's vacuum. His last play was giving the remains of his suit to Jolene so she could finish the fight. Jolene had great tricks too. She threw a cup and extended a string to call Weather Report for backup. She turned part of her arm into string to extend the range of her punch. She put her strings in Lang's launchers to wrap around his ammo and pull them back before they could hit her. This allowed her to pull Lang into the zero gravity zone, drastically shifting the tide of the fight. She's also the one to realize Lang's power range. When Weather was injured, she put a hole in her own suit to propel herself to him. Number 6. I think Jolene is the third best stand user, and this fight does the best job of displaying that. When I talk about the top 3 stand users, I mean characters who are able to take their stand ability to the next level. For example, if you give anyone the world, everyone would be using it like Dio. But if you gave people stone free, maybe 10% of them would be able to use it to its full potential like Jolene. I'll start with the villain. Jongali A has the stand Manhattan Transfer. His micro strategy was to snipe his targets from a distance and use his stand to redirect bullets. Jotro stopped time to save Jolene from a bullet, but she already saved herself. He notices that MT is avoiding the water from the sprinkler by reading the air currents. He stops time to escape from a guard. He uses his stand to punch Jolene out of the room when they were both immobile. When John Gali and Pucci tried to jump them, he stopped time, pushed Jolene out of the way, and deflected the bullets. Jolene showed that she was a top 3 stand user in this fight. She created a thick net with strings to block a bullet. She used her strings to bring a lighter to the sprinkler to interfere with MT. This plan was successful because she deduced that MT senses winds and can't actually see. She created a net to bring Jongali's attention to her, away from Emporio, and then made him miss his shot by breaking a gas line ahead of time. The layer of gas messed up MT's aim. She then used the net to grab MT and punch the stand. That's a two-step plan. She used her strings to wake Jotaro up from the dream. In the final moves of the fight, she put her strings in Jongali's gun, allowing her to change the course of the bullets. While the shooter was focused on removing the strings, she used more strings to grab his legs and spin him around, making him miss again. Then she ends the fight with a stand rush. This was one of Jolene's best fights, if not her best. Number 5 is Mista vs Saleh. Saleh's ability is craft work and it allows him to manipulate kinetic energy by locking things into position or accumulating kinetic energy. Saleh had great tricks up his sleeve. When taking a bullet to the head, he fixed the position so that it wouldn't penetrate his skull. When Mista shot again, he fixed the bullets in midair. He drew out all of Mista's bullets and fixed his hand to the truck, which should have prevented Mista from reloading. He fixed another bullet at his skin to prevent a fatal wound. He fixed rocks in the air to use his steps to catch up to Mista. He used kinetic energy accumulation on one of Misa's fixed bullets to fire it back at him with bullet speed. He's using his enemy's weapons against him. As for Mista, his side started with a cold play from Jorno. Jorno used the enemy's radio to alert Mista that the enemy was right behind him. After the shutter was closed and Saleh ran away, Mista shot bullets blindly, but he used his stance to cut bullet into Saleh's leg. When chasing the driver, Mista realized that it wasn't his target because his leg wasn't injured. Mista reloaded with only one hand with ammo in his cap and the help of his stance. He fired a bullet behind a bullet like the Shadow Shuriken technique and then had Sex Pistols launch it faster at Saleh's neck when he tried to block it. Mista put all his stands in one bullet and told his opponent that this was his last bullet. After he fired it and it didn't kill, his stands jumped on the bullet that Saleh had been preparing. The last bullet was just a distraction to get them there. That's a two-step plan. When the bullet fired, the six kicked it back at Saleh. 
When he goes for the block, the bullet splits into two and goes at his forehead, the same spot Misa hit earlier. So to get around Sully's ability to fix things as they hit him, they use this bullet to push the previous one further into his head, killing him. This fight is shorter than the past few ones, but that's because a ton of strategy is packed into a small amount of time, which is why it's so high up. Craftwork's kinetic manipulation is such a cool ability and is used in genius ways. The way the characters keep track of several elements in the fight so they can use them later shows great tactics on both sides. The conclusion to the battle is the most logical way Misa could have won against this ability. Number 4 is Man in the Mirror. Mirror has the ability to pull the users and opponents into the mirror world, thus separating them from their stand. Iluso has skills. At the start of the fight, he pulled in Fugo, separating him from his stand, and wailed on him. He tried the same trick on Abakio, but Abakio wasn't playing around. When Abakio started giving him the business, he got a mirror shard and pulled half of his opponent into the mirror world and half of his stand out, immobilizing Abakio. When Iluso is infected, he cuts off his hand and goes to the real world, removing the infection. Fugo only had one nice play. His stand has a dangerous virus in his capsules, and Giorno was using it to his advantage during the fight. But Fugo's actual play came when he swung at Iluso, the enemy caught his fist, but then Hayes fired the capsule, breaking it and infecting Iluso for the clutch victory. Abakio's stand has the ability to shapeshift or play past events of a person. He used his shapeshifting to turn his stand into himself so that Iluso would draw in moody blues. This allowed blues to grab man in the mirror and beat him up. When he gets stuck, he uses his stand's hand to grab the key that they were both after, cuts it off, and rewinds the hand to bring it back to Giorno. This is one of Abakio's sickest plays. Giorno had a pretty good match here too. Knowing that Iluso would try to drag him in, he infected himself with Fugo's lethal virus that had been activated at the start of the fight, thus bringing the virus into the mirror world. Giorno was another step ahead when he turned a brick in the real world into a snake to locate Iluso by body heat. This allowed Fugo and Purple Haze in the real world to attack Iluso. At the end, Giorno revealed a two-step plan with the snake. Since the snake was born in the virus, it had a cure to the infection, allowing him to heal himself. This fight makes great use of the abilities. The fight has four stand users fighting, and all of them find a way to shine with their abilities. Once again, this fight was shorter than the others, but it was back-to-back -back high IQ plays. For the top 3, I will go over the fights move by move. Number 3, the White Album Fight. Giaccio frees in the car before the duo even noticed there was an enemy was clever. Encasing himself in a block of ice to counter Misa's bullets was also smart. The duo countered this by using Misa's gun to create heat, and Giorno turning the bullets and the ice into roots, knocking the enemy off the car. That was a great team attack. Sex Pistols used bullets to trip the ice skating enemy. He counters by freezing the moisture from the exhaust pipe to hold on. When the car is in the water, Giorno and Mista team up again and make short grass so that Mista can snowboard away. This forces Giaccio to undo all the ice to stop Mista. The duo has another team attack when Mista is frozen. The gunman shoots Giorno's grass, reverting it back to bolts, then fires it into Giaccio's head, following up with more bullets to push it in. When Mista learns of White Album's weak point, he fires at Fish to make his opponent look down, then shoots ricochet bullets into his nape. When White Album counters by freezing the moisture in the air to ricochet the bullets back, White Album counters by freezing the moisture in the air to ricochet the bullets back, gently weeps. This is a great counter to Misa's bullets. The icicles are hard to see, so Giorno sprays his own blood to make them visible. Giaccio's next play is to eliminate the need for the air hole by freezing air, teleporting it into his suit, and melting it so he can breathe. Misa's next move is to use his own blood to blind Giaccio. Sounds familiar. The bullets he fired to make himself bleed created a spike in the pole when they ricocheted. So Mista's next strategy was to push the blind white album onto the spike and have it pierce his nape. When it starts piercing him and makes him bleed, Giaccio freezes the blood to prevent the spike from going any deeper. Giaccio reflects the final bullet to Mista's head, but Giorno immediately heals it and stomps him out, ending the fight. This had great team attacks from Giorno and Mista. Having characters combine their abilities in creative ways gets extra points. Giaccio's ice was dangerous, but the duo kept coming up with creative counters. They created heat, forced him to undo the ice, and sometimes raw power their way through to break his armor, like with the bolt and the stomping. Mista snowboarding a way to force the enemy to undo the ice and tricking him into looking down to open his weak point were both displays of creative thinking. Mista also used the freezing against Giaccio when making the board and blinding him with his blood. Giorno using the blood to find gently weeps was one of the many moments where characters sacrificed their safety for victory. White Album had creative use of his ability, like freezing the exhaust moisture, gently weeps, his new method for breathing, and freezing his blood. 
This fight would be higher if it wasn't for White Album getting new powers. While Gently Weeps was a cool concept, it was a new ability that came out of nowhere and wasn't predictable based on his earlier abilities. And then him being able to teleport anything he's frozen into his suit came out of nowhere as well to save him. These moments felt like he was given new powers by Iraqi whenever he was about to lose. Number 2. The Beach Boy and the Grateful Dead Fight This is 4 straight fights from Part 5. Grateful Dead's aging ability can be slowed down by having ice, so everyone keeping ice on them is smart. Pesci connecting his hook to the AC button was smart because coolness counters the aging, so that's what the gangsters would go for. Misa trying to get the hook out by sending a stand in his body through shooting himself was smart, though not successful. His next move is to send sex pistols to spill the hook user's ice, forcing him to undo his stand. Prosciutto hiding as an old man to incapacitate Misto was clever. Though he was down, Misa found a way to continue contributing by having Sex Pistols hold ice on Bujarati. Using his stand to unzip his head to dodge an attack was genius. Unzipping the train to bring both him and Prosciutto out was another great play by Bujarati. Pesci's next move is to use the hook to hang on to his brother. Bruno unzipping Prosciutto's hand and putting his own in the hook was an elite play. Unzipping the train to get back to safety was also smart. So was unzipping his body, including his heart, to avoid Beach Boy. Bujarati ends the fight with two more tactics, using Beach Boy's rod to break Pesci's neck and unzipping his arm for a flying punch. Sounds familiar. It's the same thing Jolene did. The biggest contributor to this fight was Bujarati, the man I'd consider to be the second best stand user. Sticky Fingers is such a versatile stand, and this battle shows off Bujarati's creativity and skill in using it. In this fight, they can do offense and evasion. He unzips his own head and entire body to evade, unzips his opponents with each punch for extra damage, unzips the train to drop both of them off, Unzips a hand to get his own in the hook, unzips the roof of the train to get back to safety, and unzips his arm for a ranged attack. This fight really shows that he's the second best stand user when it comes to creativity. Using Beach Boy against the user at the end was genius. The Grateful Dead forced everyone to have ice, which played a part in Misa unhooking himself. He also had the ability to age people faster with touch and to age and de-age himself, which allowed him to sneak up on Misa. Pesci watching out for the AC and Sex Pistols holding Bujarati's ice were also interesting tactics based on the aging. Finally, Beach Boy's stand forced Misa to shoot himself as an attempted counter and forced Bujarati to unzip himself to avoid its life sensing. Him using his stand to save his brother showed that it could be used as support, not just offense. This fight also has the theme it takes resolve to win, especially when Bujarati jumps out of the train and stops his own heart. The number one fight is the final Killer Queen fight, Josuke vs Kira. Kira combines Killer Queen and Stray Cat to create a dangerous bubble bomb. Josuke counters this by using his rubble wall, where he breaks the floor and fixes it into the shape of a wall. This is a move that was used against Highway Star. Kira counters the second wall by having the bubble sneak through the cracks and detonate, harming Josuke and putting some debris in him. Next, Josuke takes advantage of Kira's danger zone by coming close because Kira wouldn't detonate the bomb near himself. Kira making Okuyasu a bomb was a genius play because he knew that Josuke needed to touch him to save him. Hayato touching Okuyasu to detonate the bomb allowed Josuke to save him and Okuyasu. Josuke's next play was to use his blood to launch it as a blood knife, doubling as a way to split the bubble and attack Kira. Though the attack is deflected, some blood gets on Kira. Josuke's next play is to evade the bomb by pulling himself back at the last second by fixing the rubble in the shoulder back to the floor behind him. While in the house, Josuke uses smoke from the ashtray to make Kira's bubbles visible. That's like Jarno against Gently Weeps. Kira can still find him because he's using his father to tell him where the opponents are. Josuke notices the phone and fires a glass bullet with his own blood in it. Kira blocks it, but Josuke fixes the blood in the glass back to the dried blood on Kira's jacket, making it a homing bullet. That's a two-step plan. The bullet firing is a callback to when Jotaro taught him that during the rat fight. After firing the second bullet, Josuke finds Kira's dad, steals the phone to make Kira explode his father. While Kira thinks he's won, the second bullet homes in to hit him again. Stray Cat using air to block Josuke's attack was a clever way to defend himself when outmatched by Josuke's close quarters combat. Okuyasu coming back to swipe away the bomb in Stray Cat was a perfect Chekhov's gun. The final moves are Koichi using Act 3 Freeze to stop Kira from using Vice the Dust and Jotaro freezing time to break Kira's hand and beat him to a pulp. Josuke, like Bujarati, has a versatile stand that can be used in so many ways, and this fight is used to attack, defend, and evade. That's why I consider him to be the best stand user. He blocks with the Wall of Rock, evades by fixing rubble in his wound, and attacks with the homing glass bullet. The bullet itself was a multi-step plan. First, he had to get his blood on Kira. He did this with the creative blood knife, which killed two birds with one stone. After waiting for it to dry, he put his own blood into broken glass that was fixed into a bullet. 
After firing it and allowing Kira to deflect it, he had it fixed back to the dried blood, turning it into a homing bullet. Josuke also turned his enemy's attack into his own move when he used the rubble Kira exploded into him to evade. Kira was also cunning with his bomb powers. Combining Stray Cat from an earlier arc with his own powers allowed for the creation of the bubble bomb, the biggest factor in this fight. Secretly using his father to tell him Josuke's location was clever, but so was Josuke taking advantage of this. Josuke countered the bomb with some smart thinking, like moving into Kira's danger zone or using smoke to see it. Kira making Okiyasu into a bomb was an elite play. Okiyasu coming back to save the day was a perfect setup, and Koichi and Jotaro teaming up to prevent Bites the Dust was a fantastic use of their respective abilities. In conclusion, these are my top 10 JoJo fights. I believe these are the coolest and most tactical fights with some of the most creative powers. Yes, I have read part 7 and 8. The reason they aren't on this list is because they're not scrapping like parts 4, 5, and 6. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and help me revolutionize the manga industry by buying my manga and spreading the word. All important links will be in the description.